Good morning. Hi, guys. Sorry, I'm a little extra late this morning. Good morning. Look who's here. Yay. Uh, sorry, my computer installed upda updates overnight, and then it just took a really long time for everything to load this morning. Um, but here we are. Let's uh, listen to this morning's verse, and then I'll guide a meditation. the end of this text. If you realize that all things change, there is nothing you will try to hold on to. If you aren't afraid of dying, there is nothing you can't achieve. Trying to control the future is like trying to take the master carpenter's place. When you handle the master carpenter's tools, chances are that you'll cut your hand. arrive into this moment. Arrive into this time and place here and now. Notice the feeling of breathing in and out, filling and emptying, giving and receiving. Inhale and exhale might seem like opposites. But all you need to do is arrive into this moment and notice the experience of breath. to realize that they're just two parts of one whole.
The breath itself is simply movement. It's just the oscillation that life makes. learning to sit and be with this flux and change, this dance of life. This is why meditation practice is our greatest preparation for life's challenges and life's joys and pleasures. If you realize that all things change, if you witness it for yourself day after day, there is nothing you will try to hold on to. And you surrender to the inhale at every phase, beginning, middle, and end of inhale? Can you surrender to the exhale at every moment that you are exhaling? Can you give yourself to breath? Can you make an offering of yourself to life? As this sense of trust deepens, it can help to remember what it is that we love most about life, that we trust and admire most about life. In the Tao Te Ching, we're reminded again and again about the power of the Tao. It will never be possible and it will never be prudent to surrender to something that isn't powerful, that isn't real, that isn't worth our offering and surrender and trust. And so today, check in with your love, with your care. What do you love and admire most? What are you in awe of here in the universe? what seems most unquestionably good or whole or true here.
what would it feel like to truly make an offering of this moment, of this day, maybe of this whole week to that, whatever it is in the universe that you admire most. What would it feel like to say, I'm yours, make me your instrument, move through me. Now that we have connected to care, invited in some dedication and intentionality into our practice, we will return to this original simple exercise of noticing the breath on its journey in and out. Now, if it's helpful for you to add a little mantra in, you can, or maybe there's some imagery you're working with to keep the mind focused on the breath. And on the more subtle level, what we're doing is continuing to surrender and to trust in the Tao, in the universe, in the power of life. The freedom and peace and eventually bliss associated with the meditative state This all comes as we relieve ourselves of the duty of being in control, in charge of having to make something happen. And we can only really achieve those states of freedom, peace, and bliss as we learn not to be afraid of life. We are equally trusting of the beginning of the inhale as we are at the bottom of the exhale.
it's all just life. It's all just the self. If there is nothing to fear, there is no need to rush. There is no need to worry. There is no need to protect or compete. And without the need for any of those things, the mind can finally become quiet. It might get a little frustrated first because it's so used to trying to control, plan, predict, analyze. Through meditation, we learn to use the mind for a more sacred and simple function to observe the wonder of life as it happens here and now. To rest as awareness dancing with inhale and exhale, giving and receiving, ending and beginning. Rest as awareness, observing the endless dance of life.
there is nothing to do here because the Tao is already doing it in a way that is so beautiful, extraordinary, loving, supportive. that all you need to do is be awareness, be freedom. Be peace, be love. Be what you already are here and now. giving you guys the link to verses of the Tao Te Ching. And uh, today we are going to be reflecting on verses 68 through 74. I will give everybody just a couple of minutes to look at that and at the hour we will do some reflecting together. All right, I'll give you guys a few minutes to look over that right now.
All right, my friends, we're gonna come back around here. And for everybody who's on the line live, I encourage you to add any comments that you have from this, this part of the book. Um, and or just uh, reflections on where you are right now in in this uh, in this journey. We only have one more week of the daily Tao practice, um, and I will absolutely continue to teach from this book to practice from this book. Uh, but we will we will run out of verses there's only 81 and uh so that means that we yeah we have exactly one more week wednesday march 22nd 2023 that's our last one um and a little look ahead i'm gonna take off the rest of march in order to uh yeah just take a little time i want to organize the they they changed a bunch of stuff in nowhere village which i think is actually going to be great for us in the end but it made it so that it's actually pretty difficult to we can't find things in the old way so i need to rearrange a bunch of stuff in there so we can find all of the hundreds of hours of meditations etc in there more easily and um and then i sent a survey out to see what what it is that we want to do april and beyond what kind of just getting a sense of what kind of offerings everyone wants and um and so that we can be in that conversation, which when our work together is online, it's so it's difficult for me to get that feedback without that kind of thing. So um, I hope everybody engages or responds in some way. And I'm also happy to just schedule a little phone call with anybody who wants to, to give some feedback about what we do after this. Uh, so yeah, anybody who's on the line, curious, uh, of course, about how how you responded to anything, and if there's anything that jumped out at you from verses 68 through 74, but also about how you're feeling n now that we're, um, you know, now that we are 74 days into 2023 and we've been soaking up this wisdom in this daily way. I am now gonna go ahead and I don't have any comments at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and dive into um, each of these verses one by one. And I'm just gonna kind of choose, choose little things that stood out for me, things that feel resonant for me or little dots that I think are worth connecting to the rest of the text, et cetera. Verse 68, um, and, you know, just in general, for whatever reason, in this section of the book, the verses tend to be sh pretty short. Um, I notice, especially because I read them out loud and record them and then post them for you guys, that, um, you know, a lot of the verses, it'll take me about a minute to to recite aloud. And at this part, you know, all week long, it's only taken me about, you know, 35 seconds, something like that. So these are, these are shorter um, than the average. Verse 68 is, is short, and it's really about this concept, this principle of non-competition that the Tao is really big on. The best athlete wants his opponent at his best. The best general enters the mind of his enemy. The best businessman serves the communal good. The best leader follows the will of the people. All of them embody the virtue of non-competition. Not that they don't love to compete, but they do it in the spirit of play. In this, they are like children and in harmony with the Tao. So 
So in verse 68, he speaks of the best athlete. Oh, excuse me. Once his opponent at his best. And I like to do this with all, with everything in this book, but really all, all the spiritual books, if I, especially if I don't quite understand it or everything seems like a stretch, I, I try to think of literal examples that I know in my life. I just try to see if I can find some examples and then, and then the real life example will do something completely different for my psyche and my understanding than, than staying abstract with it. Um, and so, you know, just think of, think of the person who, if you know people who will like cheat to, to, to win versus the people that genuinely really want good competition. Um, and have you ever been in a situation where maybe you've been just the very best at something and then there hasn't been anybody to up your game. And at some point it's like, this, it's not even that much fun if you're the best and you don't have competition. Um, and then, you know, brings up the example of the general who has to become so intimate with the enemy, actually. The businessman who serves the communal good. Um, and that, that line also reminds me of, you know, a Nisargadatta line when you're doing something with the with the good of, of many in mind, you get all of the energy and resources of the many. And when you're doing something just small for oneself, that will always stay small because that's the amount of energy that that is that is going into that resource. So um, here's how 68 ends. Not that they don't love to compete, right? They all embody the virtue of non-competition. Not that they don't love to compete, but they do it in the spirit of play. In this, they are like children and in harmony with the Tao. And so for all of these beings, it's just the same way that it's like, if I'm really good at something, I want to have somebody who can like, who's my match, who could do it with me. The theater is a great example. I can't, I can't do a good show by myself if I don't have good people to do it with, right? Um, and in this way, they are like children and in harmony with the Tao, uh, learning how to love doing things just for the love of doing them, for the experience of play. All right, 69. Some related themes. What he calls going forward without advancing, pushing back without using weapons. Rather than make the first move, it is better to wait and see. Rather than advance an inch, it is better to retreat a yard. There is no greater misfortune than underestimating your enemy. Underestimating your enemy means thinking that he is evil. Thus you de destroy your three treasures and become an enemy yourself. The three treasures we looked at um, last week in the previous week, um, I did a whole guided meditation about those, right? Simplicity, patience, and compassion are the three treasures. And if we don't have these, then we can't resource for ourselves in life, right? And so follow the logic there. When I underestimate my enemy, I think my enemy is evil. I think my enemy is not, is not a moral human. And I would argue 
to think that someone's evil is essentially to not recognize their humanity at all. And so as soon as we do that, we have put evil into the world in our own minds and projected that onto another being who's actually just another version of ourselves. We have we made the enemy. We made an in, in animosity. We we brought it here with our way of thinking and looking. So we made the enemy. And guess what? Guess what? It's really hard to have when 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 I have chosen to look at the world this way, when I've made the world full of enemies and danger and fear. I'm not going to feel very patient. I'm going to feel very impatient to get rid of the evil in the world. I'm not going to have compassion. And then life, life loses that essence of sort of simplicity, um, ease, peacefulness. When two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one who knows how to yield. And as I've been sitting with this one this week, it's occurred to me that knowing how to yield is not the same thing as, as just yielding completely unconditionally in every instance. Earlier in this book, there were a lot of water metaphors. Water yields. It doesn't disappear. It's still extremely powerful, as we all know, if we've ever experienced flooding of any kind. Flooding is just an experience of the power of water accumulating in such a way that the, the the ways that humans have tried to live within a world of water, um, that the boundaries we put up to kind of protect ourselves from the power of water ha have sort of failed in that instance. Um, the water itself isn't failed. The water itself is doing just exactly what it does and is supposed to do. And, and so, so the self, how do you learn how to yield in a way that is like water? It's not to say this is how I thought of yielding when I was younger, which is very, very overly kind of childish, immature way of thinking about it. Yielding is just, I disappear. No, no more Aaron. There's no more Aaron. You know? And to what would it be like to yield in a way that retains all of your power? That doesn't, you wouldn't be here if we didn't need your power. Don't go away. That's, that's a problem. That would be a problem, right? Yield like water, not by going away, by being exactly what you are, by doing exactly what you're doing, but also learning how you move with all the other forces and powers that we're also called here by the Tao that also just as equally belong here. Now, how do you dance with them? The water danced with the earth to make the Grand Canyon over time. Water never became more hard. Water never stopped just being water in order to accomplish that. Seventy, my teachings are easy to understand and easy to put into practice. Your intellect, yet your intellect will never grasp them. And if you try to practice them, you'll fail. So he's saying something that we're reminded of a lot, which is the Tao is, reality is, you know, sat. Truth is. but be careful about the ways that you are trying to understand and, and, and 
practice. Um, the more, Judy really likes this one, the more sort of natural you're able to be with it, the better. Um, my teachings are older than the world. How can you grasp their meaning? Any more than you can grasp the meaning of the Big Bang, right? Or the meaning of the moment when two cells joined to, to make more complicated life. What's the meaning of that? This is something that I, 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 I speak to a lot, I think because for whatever reason in my mind, this clicks, but it also, it's like, how, how can somebody, how can, how can we, uh, just to recognize the limitations of the creation, understanding the creator, any more so than I, I, I've got this vision board back here that's still kind of uh, um, in development for me. Uh, and I realize I should probably put it somewhere else so that you guys aren't looking at it because it's, I don't know, but whatever, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, I created that. Like I sat there and I cut things out and I put things, you know, put things together. The, that vision board can't exactly understand itself you know if i build a puppet it would be surprising for the puppet to then be able to turn around and go oh, i understand now obviously that's oversimplifying it's not maybe the best metaphor because of course um we're sentient and I, who's to say that my vision board actually isn't in some way sentient it, it might be and i just wouldn't know I mean, my plants i'm sure are sentient my dog i know is sentient but but it wears a lot. Anyway, the point is we were created by the Tao and maybe not in so simplistic of a way as, as, a, as, a, as an artist sits down and makes a vision board or a puppet or whatever, but we were made by something. And then it becomes very difficult to turn around and understand the thing that has made you. It doesn't mean that we oughtn't spend time contemplating that or, and certainly I believe we should spend time honoring the create creator, whatever that, whatever, whoever that might be to recognize how it all works, but recognizing, humbly recognizing our own limitations around that. That's also basically a, an expression of patience and simplicity as well. Um, it puts us back in the, the right position and it helps us know what our limitations are. Now, this is so beautiful. If you want to know me, this is how this verse ends. And in this case, the Tao is speaking sort of in the first person, right? If you want to know me, look inside your heart. So this spiritual theme from all over the world throughout time, it's not in your, your mental understanding. It's in the love. It's in the love. It's in the way that we look at the world when we're experiencing love. That's, that's looking at the world with wisdom, real wisdom. And as long as we are, we believe that the mind is wiser than the heart, we're going to chase after wisdom. Sorry, knowledge. Yeah. We're going to chase after knowledge and just be accumulating knowing. Oh, and guess what? 71 tells us why that's a problem. 71. Not knowing is true knowledge. Presuming to know is a disease. First realize that you're sick, then you can move forward toward health. The master is her own physician. She has healed herself of all knowing. Thus, she is truly whole. 
here's one that I can look to my own personal life and see this as being true. He says it in a way that's going to feel controversial for it. If, if an immature version of myself would not have gotten it, and in fact would have maybe bristled. But the times in my life when I have been really most in danger of suffering and, and really prepped myself the most for real suffering, those have been the moments when I knew something. I really knew it. I was sure about it, right? But it wasn't true. Or it was a partial truth. And in those cases, we get really attached to something false. It's much less dangerous to just be kind of moving through the world, learning as we go, than to act in, than to believe something that is not totally true. Because believing, it's like, what, what, what's a good way? It's like, okay, if if actually what it is is that you know something in my diet, I, I have some kind of allergy to, right? But I believe that the reason why I'm getting a rash is because of a bird that keeps visiting a tree outside my house. And then I spend all this energy and time trying to avoid, I don't know, like avoid the bird get, coming to my house or something like that. Right? We spend all this time and energy. And meanwhile, my quote unquote knowing is keeping, preventing me from understanding what the real issue is that's actually affecting my health. It's kind of a weird example. But think about it in your own life. Any aha moment revelation that you've had, it's been a moment when you have been relieved of your knowing. Right? I was sure this person was trustworthy. And then I just got revealed that they're not completely. That's really helpful to know. Right? Um, I really thought that if I just did yoga every single day, I would never get sick. The revelation wasn't, was, wasn't a pleasant one, but man, is it really helpful to realize that. That has huge ramifications to realize that that knowing was false. You have to, the revelation moment, the realizing that I'm sick. I mean, that's, this has literally happened to me. Realizing that I was sick was when I started going, oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta fix this. I gotta get help. I want, I want to get healthy. And that revelation moment felt like a bad moment, but in fact, that was the wisdom coming through. 72, when they lose their sense of awe, people turn toward religion. When people no longer trust themselves, they begin to depend upon authority. Therefore, the master steps back so that people won't be confused. He teaches without teaching so that people will have nothing to learn. Notice today as you go through your day, how can you just be with the Tao in a way it is a, it, in a way that's like raw, that's just intimate, that's just, it's natural. Religion and external authorities, these are, um, these are what happen when we're not just already with, with what is when we need some help, which, which, hey, maybe sometimes we just need some help, <laughs> but see what it's, what it's like to just be with awe, awesomeness, right? And realize that's God, for that's the Tao, that's the universe, that's love, that's truth. Come to trust yourself, come to trust the Tao as it expresses itself through you. And less and less, you're going to need an outer authority. 
and as leaders, if you want to be, if this resonates with you, you want to be one of these masters of the Tao and, and lead others from that place. Take a step back. Demonstrate that you trust the Tao that's living in somebody else by letting them sort it out. And, and not just, de not just abandoning them, like you do it, you know, right? But I believe, I believe you could do this, you know? How do you do that in a way that's encouraging and loving and that we stand by? The Tao doesn't abandon us. The Tao is always here, right? Standing by, standing, standing firm, standing as awareness, peace, and love. I'm here, but I'm I'm also going to step back. And we learn how to step back when we meditate in the way that we have been. Becoming the observer and observing that the Tao is already doing it beautifully. Seventy-three. The Tao is always at ease. It overcomes without competing, answers without speaking a word, arrives without being summoned, accomplishes without a plan. I've been I've been kind of sitting with this one as my yeah, just you know, a description of what I would like to embody this week. to catch myself when I'm trying to overcome by competing, when I'm trying to answer with a lot of words. What would it feel like to just say, Aaron, you will arrive exactly where you need to be without being summoned and to trust that, to accomplish without a plan. What is that? What would that feel like? I've been trying to tap into that. Um, Last night, I, I went into my aunt's house and her really good friend who lives next door was in there and it's kind of late. I was just actually going in to say good night. And I, as I was in there, I remembered a text from a friend of mine the night before who's coming to visit. I needed to ask if she could stay at the neighbor's house because she's allergic to the dogs. And it's long story short, the point is, I'm actually somebody who normally, I'm, my, my mind is like, is really good at grabbing onto things and keeping them. And my to-do list is always long. And I spend a lot of time every day organizing and manipulating and massaging that thing. And for a moment, I was mortified that like, I had completely forgotten. I got a text last night. I had completely forgotten until I was standing in front of Babs, the neighbor, and then I asked her, she said, yeah, sure, of course your friend can stay. She told me how much, whatever, we need to pay for the cleaning fee, et cetera, for her to stay there, whatever. And I, I came back to my house kind of shook because I normally, I was like, Erin, you almost forgot something important. You almost didn't respond to your friend. It's already been over 24 hours and it's late in New York and you're going to respond. And then I remembered this teaching from the Tao, but also from my other teacher that like the master knows what she needs to know when she needs to know it. She doesn't have to grasp or retain everything. You know, we're almost done here. Can you just chill? I'll let you out in a minute. Um, but anyway, I thought, Aaron, hey, can you just lean into this? This is an example. It's like you arrived without being summoned or the information arrived without being summoned. You accomplish this without there being this big to-do list and this big plan and it being on your list and you crossing it off. What if that's okay? I love this line. Its net covers the whole universe. And though its meshes are wide, it doesn't let a thing slip through. I love that. And it's like, you could be that kind of presence for others. I, I give a lot of grace. I'm not forcing anything. I, I'm available, but I'm, I'm, I'm letting you do your path. And yet nothing slips through somehow, you know, nothing is missed. No one's abandoned. No one disappears. We're all we're all still here, right? Present, but giving giving that space and room 
for everything to work as it does. Okay, last one, last one. 74, if you realize that all things change, there is nothing you will try to hold on to. We were practicing this in meditation. I use that line in meditation. If you aren't afraid of dying, there is nothing you can't achieve. Gosh, I've been working with this a lot too. The sense of just, it's its just our, it's our fear that keeps us from, that keeps us trapped in, in recreating the reality in our own minds, which is actually so stuck and so small. It's, it's not nearly as vast as whatever it is that created us as its capabilities and its possibilities that it can come up with, right? So how limiting. And that limitation is, is, is fear and or comes with fear. So if we can let go of the fear, boom. Suddenly all the possible is, is back with us. And then here, trying to control the future is like trying to take the master carpenter's place. Okay, so here's a theme that I've been teasing this whole time. The idea that Pinocchio is not going to go back to and, and, and become the carpenter. The master carpenter has a completely different level of ability and skill. Now, perhaps... Perhaps a being could become the master carpenter. I believe that that's sure, totally possible. But what he's saying is don't, don't go around trying to control things until you're sort of over the illusion of control. The master carpenter could sit there with those, those tools and all of that ability and let the Tao move through his instrument. If you want to control and you're sitting there, then you actually don't even have the wisdom and the skill yet to be there. And you're going to hurt yourself. It certainly is not going to turn out the way that you imagined it. When you imagined that you were the master carpenter, when you, when you thought you could sit down and play master carpenter without getting yourself to that level of, of enlightenment. The Yoga Sutras talks about this too, right? About seeking after, you know, special powers that we can, we can achieve through yoga practice without without first just sitting in humility, patience, compassion, without just becoming as humble and simple as a stone. And it's the one that, that can appreciate the power of the hum humble and simple and yielding that actually that can actually really be a channel for, for the Tao as the master is. And, and at least for me, the big takeaway, at least at this moment of encountering this is simply relax. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't, why would you put that on yourself, Aaron? Why would you want to take on the responsibility of being the master carpenter just enjoy being, being what you are, being with what is. Become at peace with the fact that things change and that death exists. Become at peace with the inhale and the exhale and everything that is, is right now and here. And then you won't need to be getting ahead of yourself or, or, or imposing yourself into spaces that, that aren't yours to to be in charge of. Thank you for spending time with me this morning. And um, I'm looking forward to this final week of the Daily Tao. I'm looking forward to um, figuring out what's beyond that, uh, hopefully with a little feedback from you guys. And and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, thanks. 
Thank you to everybody who's here. Thank you to everybody who's watching or listening. Good. <laughs>